Welcome to Wisconsin Family. I'm Janet Cresson. I'm Justin Riley, and Janet, I gotta tell you, it's great to be hosting with you today. This is the first time that we've hosted together. Yeah, it is. It's kind of fun. Yeah. At least all the girls. Yeah, <laughs> well, uh, hopefully you can get used to me. So. <laughs> <laughs> We're here on location at Capital Brewery in their beer stube, and we'll talk to those folks a little bit later on in the program, but we've got a great show for you today. We're gonna be joined by Pegasus Games. Lori Aitken always brings in something so interesting to talk about, and um, I think the theme of today is farming and agriculture. I think so. You know, it took me back. Do you remember Battleship? I do. I remember. Yeah, it, yeah. you sunk my battleship. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. You know, I was just curious though, Justin, do you remember this one? Happy Days. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't actually, to be honest. Wow. I they was have a, a game? I know. I was a Happy Days junkie. What can I say? <laughs> Anything with Fonzie. <laughs> Anything with Fonzie. He was a, a good-looking dude. Uh, it's, it's actually kind of game day today because mm -hmm. we'll be uh, also joined by Bonnie from The Learning Shop, and she's going to bring in some neat toys and games that you can play with younger kids, too. So. It is. It's all fun and games today. I did stop in at their learning shop, and there is something about stickers, and Justin, I thought I would just give you a sticker today. because What I is it, a smiley face sticker? I'm going to give Justin a smiley face oh, right there. Oh, well, I feel so Justin, loved. So. <laughs> Justin always does a great job. Well, thank you for, for being with, with us here today, Janet. I'll enjoy hosting the show today. And don't you go away. There's more Wisconsin Family coming up right after the break. And welcome back to Wisconsin Family. We're talking board games next. In the world of gaming, players can build cities or railroads. They can wage war on zombies or pirates. <laughs> can even explore the world or, or outer space. And no one knows this better than Lori Aiken of Pegasus Games. Thanks for, thanks for coming in. Good morning. And bringing all this. You always bring such great stuff to, to show us. So we're going to be playing some games today. What, right. what are the themes or theme of these games? Well, given our nice weather and the greening of the fields, I thought we would explore um, gardening and farming games today. Oh, fun. Fun. That's cool. That's cool. So now it, spring is, is upon us. Are there games where people actually get to play in the dirt? Not, <laughs> not in Pegasus. Not a Pegasus. Um, okay. That's up to, you know, <laughs> someone's discretion. Um, but we can figuratively play in the dirt and make things grow and uh, sure, okay. reap okay. the benefits. So there's some strategy to some of these games in like planting and you know making making decisions about. Yes, there are. Okay, very yes, cool. Yes, there are. Very cool. What ages are these for? Because well, I know I'm interested. <laughs> well, okay. Um, most of the even the small child games that we try to stock are at least going to be fun, interesting, and thoughtful. So parents won't have to gnaw their legs off to get away from playing it. Right. Um, so <laughs> we start with the youngest. Uh, uh, person games in front of Justin. Okay, so this is Farmville or Farm F Fun Farm. The, the me. youngest one we have is called My First Bonanza. I, oh, I, I didn't, didn't see that open one. it up. Okay. It's about bean farming. Okay. Um, it is a young person version of one of my favorite games ever called Simply Bonanza, yeah. which we'll get to. Um, but yes, it's a, a game accessible to four year old and up, okay. and it is about matching certain types of beans and, and growing as many as you can. Oh, okay. It's a, card, it's a cart matching game. Okay, and then we've got Fun Farm over here, it looks Fun like. Farm is exactly that. It looks um, fun, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, yep, yeah. The, the little animals, which are nice and squishy, yeah. are in the center of the table, and squishy. each player draws a card. <laughs> And rolls the die. When the die, when a color on the die matches a die, color on the card, then every player tries to be the first one to grab the animal on the card. Oh, really? And if okay. they do, then they, they get that card as a point, and it goes around to the next player. So if this little green guy comes up, and then the die matches that color, then matches the two circles. Oh, matches the two circles. The circles okay. On there. Okay. Yep. So it's a great game for. Um, it says five. I think a four-year-old could handle it sure, if yeah. they're used to sitting still. And okay. Um, These are fun. Yeah. Yeah, and you know. Yeah. And then you've got uh, Carcassonne over here. Carcassonne over hill and dale is a variant of my one of my most favorite games ever, Carcassonne. Okay. And in over hill and dale, you are hiking through the countryside, uh, gardening and um, raising animals okay. and claiming fields and putting stables up. So your little meeple, which is what the little pieces are called, okay. um, 
create the map as you go along, wander the trails, and uh, create gardens and, and grow them bigger. And Excellent. And what you, I remember we, we talked a little bit before the, the show about how this is actually an expansion pack that you brought. Well, it's a standalone game, but it's okay. a variation of Carcassonne, which is based on building a medieval city. Got it. Okay. And it is for ages seven and up. Okay. And in fact, the first time I ever played the core game of Carcassonne, I had the pants whooped off me by a seven-year-old. <laughs> so it's a really good all-ages game. Sure, yeah. And it plays equally well with two or up to five. Okay. So it's it's a really it's a really sound game. Awesome, awesome. And then you have My Happy Farm. My Happy here. Farm is I'm for excited for eight this and up. And in My Happy Farm, you're trying to um, grow and buy crops, and okay. then you use those crops to build your animals out of cards. And so oh, yeah. you it looks the like they have, a, they have a front, a middle, and an end. So you know, the bigger you can grow them, and the okay. happier they are, the more points they will get you. All right, excellent. And then Takenoko. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah, that's the panda one. Takenoko so is here. about bamboo farming, so that okay. you can feed the panda. Sure. The trouble is, the panda will sometimes eat your bamboo before you have a chance to get points for it. So right. you want to grow your bamboo <laughs> to be able to feed the panda, but not have him eat it right away. So. Right. Right. Pandas and it's eat got a lot great of... little toys to build your bamboo sure. shoots. Oh, yep. that's cool. So those are the bamboo shoots, right? Those there are the bamboo okay. plants. Yep. That's... So you can build them bigger. That's cool. And then Catan Trade Build Settle. Uh, Catan is a well-known game, mm -hmm. so people out there may know about it. It is a, a game for three to four players. Okay. Um, it says ages 10 and up. Again, some experienced younger players sure. could, could, I think, access Catan with adult help. Um, and it's a game of farming and building your, your settlements with roads and, and cities. Sure, okay. And so you have to acquire um, commodities like wood and sheep and wheat and bricks and trade them with each other to yeah. get the right combinations to, to build your cities. And we're not getting, I'm, we're, I'm going to Let's get much. to it's this not, one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Scoville is a game about pepper farming and breeding the hottest peppers. And it is by a wonderful local um, Game designer from Wisconsin. From from the area here. Oh yes. wow! Okay, yes. that's really cool. That's really and cool. And so yeah, it's got great little farmer <coughs> meeples and great little pepper meeples. That's well, before cool. we let you go, Lori, you have a demo day coming up. You want to mention? Mm -hmm. We do. We have a couple demo days on the nineteenth. We have a game, Secrets of the Tomb, where you're exploring some spooky boo Egyptian tombs. Ooh. And then on the twenty sixth, we have a game called Ninja All Stars, which is a miniatures game of ninjas fighting each other. And that's at your shop? That is at our shop, and the Ninja All-Stars is a local gentleman. Okay, very cool. So it's cool. another local game. Cool. Lots of good things. And that's the 19th and the 26th? 19th and 26th, Saturday March. afternoons. Excellent. Alrighty. Excellent. Well, Lori Aitken, thank you so much for joining us. It's thank always you. a pleasure. All right. We'll be right back with more Wisconsin Family. Stick around. And welcome back to Wisconsin Family. And Janet and I have been enjoying ourselves here at Capital Brewery here in Middleton. And we'll uh, talk to those folks later on in the program. But first, we've got quite a lot to talk about here today. And we are joined now by Bonnie Pearson over from the Learning Shop here in Madison. Welcome back, Bonnie. Thanks for having me always, again. <laughs> always good to have you. You always bring something interesting to show and tell. Um, so uh, today it looks like we're kind of covering a different age demographic than we've seen before. Am I right about that? You are correct. Okay. Today we are focusing mostly on hmm, two to four year olds, the little sure. learners. There are a few things that maybe go five to six, but most of them will be for your little learners. Okay. All right. That's very good. Just looking over all of this, it looks uh, really similar. Is it all the same company? It is. It's from a company oh, called Learning Resources. We call them LER for right. short. But they are truly a company that do toys that teach. Most of these will have play value, but they will also have learning value attached. Well, that's what the learning shop's all about. It is! Yeah. Good! We just don't want to tell the kids. That <laughs> exactly! So, well, let's get started. I'm really excited to, to look at this thing here because, I mean, this is so cool. You turn this crank and then gears move. Everything moves. It does. So what, what is what is this? What are we looking at here? That is called Gears, Gears, Gears. Um, <laughs> good good, good observation named. there. Aptly named. Um, and the, the reason Gears is so neat is not only does it give your child creative license to build either out or up or mm -hmm. put the little animals in or do whatever, mm -hmm. but it also you're teaching kids cause and effect. Those little cogs have to connect together. Otherwise, when you turn that crank, 
the rest of the gears aren't going to turn. Right. So it's a definite cause and effect type game, and it's also their fine motor skills, putting sure, those yeah. pieces in the board um, and getting them to do that. And as you can see, they're, they're very colorful, very durable, you can throw them in the wash, you're good. Yeah. Yeah. Intentionally or not. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. And then you've got uh, over there, it looks like you've got some uh, some fruit and vegetable type of things. I do. These. Uh, this is called Farmer's Market, and okay. it's a sorting game. So you may sort by color, which the baskets, oh, okay. Okay. you know. Okay, there you go. Or, or you may sort by fruit and vegetable. And whenever you're playing with children, it's a good idea to have that back and forth of asking questions because that's how you're going to increase vocabulary. Mm -hmm. and learn what's really going on up here. Right. So you could say, um, I'd like two fruits. Could you pick two fruits out of there? Oh, okay. And then you would do so. I feel like it's a trick question. <laughs> a tomato's a fruit. <laughs> it actually is. You are right. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> the pressure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> but but that, you know, that's that's one of the focuses of that. And a lot of times you're gonna find these, I find them in the play kitchen in the store too, because well who wants to do this? I want those over in the play kitchen. Right. So yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've always had an affinity for the play and pretend food. I, I know what about that. I don't know. Yeah. I mean look at this cute little popcorn thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's very cool. So, but we don't actually have popcorn in there, am I right? You don't. This whole line of games, this is the pop line. Okay. So this one's pop for sight words. This is another sight words game. This is word oh, families. Okay. This one's adding and subtracting, and you're not using popcorn for that one. That one's bubble gum. Yeah. Okay. Um, so they're all kind of based on that same premise. You will choose a piece of popcorn. Okay. Again, the pressure. There you go. And then the child would read the word on it. It's a sight word. There. And if you are correct, which you are, you may keep your piece of popcorn. Oh, I see. So it's kind of like flash cards, but it's in the shape exactly. of popcorn. Exactly. So exactly. It makes it more fun. Right. Sure. And that's, we get a lot of that. My yeah. child does not want to do flash cards. Is there some other way we can learn sight words? Yeah. And this is a good way to do it. That's cool. And then if you choose the word pop, all of your pieces go back in. Oh. So sometimes I say take it out. If your child is one of those who just yeah. is going to fall apart Shut because down. of that, right, yeah. take it out. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. So I have one. How many do you have, Justin? I have zero. <gasps> you oh. win, yay! <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm curious to know about these vowel owls here because that you've got some sitting out yep. front, but then the box is yep. right there. So what, are the what is vowel this? Vowel owls. Vowel owls is a game um, where you're focusing on vowel sounds. Uh -huh. So. If we draw a card, Justin, I'll let you do this this oh, time. I'm right. gonna I'm gonna reach across you. I'm sorry. Okay. So I gotta just draw a card. Yes. And what is the picture? It is a seashell. Okay. So shell. What vowel sound is in the word shell? Uh, so is it, it is. E? Yes. Which one do you have? Oh, she she was gonna try to trick you. <laughs> um, so you would just drop that in the vowel. Oh, e. E. oh, okay. Yeah, Got they're it. all so you'll have your A E I O U. That's oh, okay. one way one. you can play. It has short vowels. It has long vowels. So it's just a drill on vowel sounds. Very phonetic. Again, okay. this is probably going to be for more of your kindergarten, sure. first grade age than, and these as well. You know, these will be more for your um, lower age child. Excellent. Mm -hmm. You know what I love about the learning shop is that. If somebody goes and they're looking for uh, something that teaches X, Y, and Z, they mm -hmm. can ask anybody in the store yes. and they'll be able to help you. And they're, everybody that you have working there is just so knowledgeable about what what each of these things teach, which I think is well, really, really cool. thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. We're doing our job. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Real quick before we go, what, what is this? Those are just alphabet blocks. Okay. And you can um, put them together, upper and lower case, and then they'll also make a picture. Oh, that's but cool. They're, and, and you could use them to make little towers or whatever. And then if you really get creative, you could try to spell words, but I don't know if kids would get thrown off by only having a half a penguin sure. on there or something, <laughs> right, you know? Right. Yeah. But that's that's the focus of it. You're you're teaching alphabet. Half yeah. a penguin, that throw me off too. <laughs> <laughs> Always something new at the learning shop. Bonnie Pearson, thank you so much well, for joining for us today. Me. Don't go away. There is more with Wisconsin Family coming up right after this. Stick around. And welcome back to Wisconsin Family. And here we are at the beer stube of Capital Brewery. It's the moment we've all been waiting for. <laughs> We're going to talk to somebody from Capital Brewery, not just anybody, but one of the brewers here. We're talking now with Zach Faber. Zach, welcome. Hi. 
thanks for having us here today. No problem, anytime. Yeah, um, so you guys just wrapped up Bachfest not too long ago. How'd that go? It went very well. We had a lot of people come through. Weather was perfect. Sure, yeah. You know, and we didn't have to worry about snow removal or anything like that. But we sold a lot of beer and had a good time. That's good, that's good. And Maybach is mm -hmm. still on tap. Um, tell us a little bit about this Maybach. Maybach is just a traditional German Bach. Mm -hmm. um, little bit on the sweeter side, real easy to drink. A uh, little bit higher in alcohol, okay. so you gotta be a little bit careful with it, but it's yeah. one of our best selling seasonals for sure. Excellent, and that's still available right now. Yep, it's available for a little bit longer and then we'll come out with our new one. Why is it like that where they're available for a period of time and then they change? Is that a seasonal thing? Yep, we have four seasonals throughout the year and so we push them for about three months each and then mm -hmm. we just roll them over to the next year. It's a little bit more exclusive. The public seems to like it a little bit better and yeah. come out with just a little bit more beer every year. Might be nice for you. It gives you a little bit of a change up and it gives people yeah. something to look forward to as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So speaking of some of them, can we talk about this one, the Ghost Ship? There's been a lot of buzz about this IPA. Can you tell me why and how is it different from the others? It's a little bit different just because we put so much citrus in there. There's mm. grapefruit and coriander and orange lemon and so it's just a real fun kind of beer. It's 5.6%, real easy to drink. Uh, we call it a great breakfast beer, so you can make perfect mimosas out of it or have it with sure. brunch. Sure. And it doesn't, doesn't really drink too heavy. Can you sure. speak so, to where the name came from? Um, it was just kind of a random name that we came up with. The first IPA we had was the Mutiny. And oh, that, okay, sure. So we kind of went with the nautical yeah. theme for a while, and then we got away from it with the Grateful Red that just came out. But After a mutiny happens, it becomes a ghost ship. Right? <laughs> exactly. That's probably what happened. So, okay, that's cool. I thought when you said it was going to be a great uh, breakfast beer that you could pour it on your cereal or eat it with cornflakes <laughs> or something like that. But um, anyway, I'll take, I'll take mimosas. Mimosas work yep. for me, too. And I like... I, I always like, believe it or not, I actually like the more fruity type of beers too. I yeah. think that's, that's got to, I always look forward to when they come out. So. It's a real fun one to make when we blend up all the spices in the back. It smells like Fruit Loops. <laughs> that's awesome. So. That is the breakfast beer yes. then. There you go. We're getting all the behind the scenes <laughs> stuff yeah, here. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Lake House is coming out pretty yep. soon. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, and that's my favorite summer seasonal. It's just a real easy drinking Hellas style lager. It's got yeah. a lot of flavor profile to it. Really goes well with anything. You know, barbecue, you can have it with dinner, anything like that, all day sure. long. So. Sure. All day long. And it's a lager, you said? Yes. Okay, excellent. Is it your favorite to drink or your favorite to brew? Um, my favorite to drink. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. I was going to ask you yeah. that, so you just like <laughs> anticipated what I was thinking. Yep. <laughs> Brewing it's real easy. It's just a standard lager. You just got to have it on point as you go down the line. But it's a great tasting beer for sure. Excellent. Now, Stark Beer Fest is coming up. Now, your, your beer garden opens in April, but this is going to be in March in, what, the 19th? Yep. Okay. Tell us about that event. It's uh, modeled after Stark Beer Fest in Germany. They hold one every year, and so we decided to bring a little bit more flavor from Germany into our brewery. We do make traditional German lagers for the most part, and so it's just another festival that we can have right before we open to get some buzz that the garden is going to open here in a couple weeks. and. A lot of good breweries bring out a really, really great selection of beers. And so. you, you limit the number of people that can yes. buy tickets for this event, yep. right? Yeah, almost all of our events we limit the amount of tickets for. Okay. Where, where can people get tickets, Zach? Go ahead and check online. They should have a list of where you can get them. So. Excellent. And you have live music and food yep. and... We'll have live music, food, and I think 16 different breweries. Wow, so. oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. And hopefully some great weather. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, sh it should be real nice. By Hard then. to believe that in just a couple of weeks the beer garden will be open again. But yeah. you guys you guys use the beer garden for Bachfest. Yeah. So, so <laughs> well when you put that many people into a place you gotta have a lot of space. Sure. And yeah. So yeah. the beer garden is really the only place that we have that we can hold an event like that. Plus yeah. we have thirty six tap handles outside versus the twelve that are in here. So sure, we that's can true. move through lines a that's little true. bit faster. So uh, uh, besides what's going on in the summertime, uh, tours are going on year round here yep. at Capitol Brewery. Uh, give us a few details. What sorts of things can people do when the beer garden is not open and where you're not having special events? Uh, we have the stube open all summer, or mm -hmm. all winter long, mm -hmm. and you can come in and just sit around and watch some football, have a good time, nice. or you can jump on a tour. Um, it comes with a couple samples here behind the bar and. Mm -hmm get a lot of good information from the back. Usually one of the bartenders leads it, but if you come in on a special weekend, you'll get a brewer or Ashley, our brewmaster, to do it. And okay. so 
a, yeah. a learning opportunity. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And there really is so much to learn about brewing. And there's a lot that goes into it that people don't even realize, especially if you've never done it yourself. So talk to us a little bit about like what the roles are of a brewmaster versus brewer. You know, what do you do versus what does Ashley do? Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, Ashley really comes up with the recipes. She does okay. a lot of the handling of the building, but as far as the actual brewing process goes, the brewers take care of it. And so if we have a question or we have an issue with that brew, then we can go ahead and go to her and she'll know how to fix it. But we usually just go off the recipe and everything hits its mark and we don't usually have too many issues. So she does a lot of this kind of stuff with the PR and sure. is the yeah. face of the brewery. Before yeah. the so. cameras were rolling, we were talking about how cleaning is a really mm -hmm. big part of your job. Oh, yeah. Can you tell me more about that? Well, every time you use a tank, you have to go ahead and clean it and then you have to sanitize it. And right. so. Doing that is about 75% of our time, and so you've got to go in and rinse it out, and we have horizontal tanks, and so you actually climb inside and scrub them by hand. Wow, really? And so it's a time-consuming time consuming effort, for right. sure. Important. Yes, right. very. So important. Worth the time. How long have you been brewing? Um, I've been a brewer for seven years. Okay. So I worked here at Capital for about four. Excellent, excellent. And you enjoy it? Yes, I love awesome. my job. How did you get started? Just curious on that. Um, my wife's best friend in Las Vegas, that's where I moved here from, was he owned a brewery and needed an extra hand one day and one day became seven days a week. So wow. you yeah. never know. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> so remind us real quickly again when Lake House comes out. What is the date on that? Do we have a date? I do not have an exact okay. date. Uh, we'll start sending it out to the distributors here in a couple weeks. Okay. And so it should be on shelves probably mid-April. Excellent. is what I would guess. Mid-April, we can start looking for the lake house. And the Stark Brewery. Beer Fest. And the Stark Beer Fest is coming up too. Saturday the 19th. Yep. Saturday the 19th, remember yep. you can get tickets for that. Yep, go on to uh, capital, capitalbrewery.com and get yep. your tickets and find out where you can get your tickets. So, um, Zach Faber, thank you so much for joining thank us today. Guys. It's been a pleasure talking with you. You too. So that's all the time we have for Wisconsin Family. Thanks for joining us today and we'll see you next time.